What culture? I don't know if I want to do this again. In fact, I know I don't. Hands up who's literally stopped drinking out of office coffee cups as a result of our last foray into Disturbia. Comment below. It's funny though, isn't it? Because we're back again at that strange junction of, oh God, Peter's about to reel off another helping of horrible, horrible truths, and I really don't think I'm gonna like it. And yet, you can't not look. It's okay though, I'll get you through it. I'm Peter from WhatCulture.com and hide your kids, hide your wife, because here are 10 more disturbing facts you really don't want to know. Number 10. Human remains at Disneyland. So first off, there are rumours that some of the skeletons on Pirates of the Caribbean are real. Rumours though, unconfirmed, and we don't deal in rumours here at Disturbing Facts Incorporated. No, instead we're talking about the dust. Over the years, Disneyland has received hundreds and hundreds of requests from those seeking to scatter the ashes of their loved ones in the land where wishes come true. Well, evidently not all wishes, because permission has been denied every single time. However, that's not enough to stop people sneakily casting off a couple of fistfuls of Grandpa Cyril on Space Mountain, or surreptitiously upturning Granny Doreen's urn halfway around It's a Small World. Ever noticed how f***ing horrendously dusty it is in the Haunted Mansion? This might not just be prop dust. It so happens that this is the most popular ride of all for people to leave behind a little bit of cremated relative, and while Disney workers do what they can to tidy up, they can't get to it all. To that effect, the Haunted Mansion may genuinely contain a few restless spirits, furious that half of their remains ended up getting sucked into a Dyson, and the other half has to live out eternity as a thin layer of grime beside an automated tramway. Now there's a really good reason to keep your hands inside the cart at all times. Number 9. We breathe in a litre of farts every day. If I told you there were intestinal gases constantly floating all over the open plan office, the school classroom, and your preferred method of public transport, you might think I was at least half wrong. I mean, how can that be true, right? The most infamous characteristic of a fart, of course, is that you bloody well know whether or not there's one hovering over your head, right? <laughs> well not as such. You see, our noses aren't miracle workers, and once a guff has been in the room long enough to spread itself out over a larger area, you're going to be blissfully unaware of the fact that it's there contributing to the communal gas cloud getting constantly inhaled and exhaled by those around you. Large public areas are absolutely brimming with trumps, and you're huffing them all day without even knowing it. Shallow breaths, guys. Shallow breaths. Number 8. Hairy Babies Here's a f***ing mental one for you. During the second trimester of pregnancy, approximately 16 weeks after conception, the fetus grows a moustache. Seriously, it's a soft, downy hair called lanugo, which then gradually spreads across the baby's entire body until the mother-to-be is effectively carrying around a little sasquatch by week 20. Sometimes, particularly in cases of premature labour, the baby can be born hairy, although the lanugo is usually shed in utero sometime after the seven-month mark, at which point the fetus well, consumes it in the womb. What, what's going on? C can someone fact check this before the video goes out? I don't know if this is true. Number seven, Haunted Mexico Doll Island. What? Who wrote this? You got plans to visit Mexico City at any point? Well, be sure to stop by at Isla de la Muñecas, said no one ever, because it translates as Island of the Dolls and every f***ing tree looks like this. Legend goes that many years ago, a girl drowned in the surrounding canals under mysterious circumstances, and when a doll was later found bobbing along in the water, it was hung in a tree as a sign of respect, an action that was then imitated to the point that the place is now chock full of the things. And of course, you can't have an island of dirty, broken doll trees without supplementary tales of ghostly whisperings and mysterious footsteps that are now well known around the world. Now, I can't and won't comment on the credence of a supposed haunting, but either way, what does it matter? Ghost or not, these images alone are absolutely nightmarish. Stay away from Mexico City. Number 6. 22 pounds of pressure will explode a test die. 22 pounds. 22 pounds? That's nothing. That's like 9 kilos. That's like the weight of a sausage dog. In fact, I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's only a fraction of the force that can be exerted by the squeeze of a female fist. The fingers of a jilted lover, for example, can dish out a crushing force of over 60 pounds. And thus, if she so wanted, that girl you cheated on in your first year of university could knock on your door tomorrow, grab both of your testes in a single hand, give them only a moderately burly squeeze, and pop go the weasels. There's a bad thing 
talking about? Wow. <laughs> what is my job? Number five, your pet cat will eat your face if you die alone. Oh good, oh joy, oh top banana. There are many reported cases of people who live alone leaving this mortal plane and lying undiscovered for days or weeks as they begin to decompose. Now that's undignified enough, even before they fall victim to what is known as post-mortem predation. This occurs when your hungry pet stops seeing the lifeless body on the ground as their dearly departed master and begins to have Looney Tunes food hallucinations. And you know who the worst culprits are? Asshole cats, of course. F them. The American Academy of Forensic Sciences found in recent years that dogs stave off the temptation to tuck into their former best friend for much longer than cats who might actually start chowing down on your corpse in less than 24 hours. And it won't start with a hand or foot either. No, the darn thing will begin with the cheeks and the eyes. Top f***ing banana. Number four, dolphins try to rape humans. God, what is with all these beloved animals besmirching their own reputation? It's really hard not to be endeared by a creature as intelligent, beautiful, and fun-loving as a dolphin, especially when they've been known to literally save humans from hungry sharks. Evidently, they love us as much as we love them, although it's possible they love us maybe a little too much. Dolphins are still wild animals, unpredictable, dangerous, and frisky during mating season, and on more than one occasion, sexually frustrated male dolphins seeking to get it on have come sniffing around seals and human divers. When the dolphin fails to gain admittance with its human partner, it might try to push the diver to the ocean floor to have its way. Fortunately, this has never gone as far as penetration, because a wetsuit can withstand a force of up to, oh my god, what am I saying? I, my mum watches these. Number three, some tumors can grow teeth. Known as teratoma tumors, these little balls of nightmare fuel tend to develop from special types of stem cell. Those of you who paid attention in high school biology will recall that a stem cell is unspecialized and thus has the potential to become any kind of cell, and this effect can be frighteningly realized in teratoma. Though generally benign and harmless, thank God, the tumors essentially allow any old tissue to form in any old part of the body. Specifically, they've been known to grow hair, bones, brain matter, eyes, even hands and feet, and in a few cases, they've been found to have their own teeth. My Lord. Thankfully, there are no documented cases of them developing the independent muscle and neural systems required to take a bite out of anything, but watch this horrible, horrible space. Number two, you could develop actual werewolfism. Well, well, not actual werewolf. Okay, number two. You can't develop actual werewolfism, but you can develop a combination of disorders that together would make you exactly like a werewolf. That doesn't roll off the tongue as much. Anyway, hypertrichosis. Remember those hairy babies? This is nothing to do with that. You've probably seen pictures like this before. The condition results in uncontrollable hair growth that can affect not only the patient's entire face, but sometimes their whole body. Generally, people are born with the disorder, but it can also be acquired in later life as a symptom of other conditions, including cancer and anorexia. But of course, I'm not suggesting that just because some poor soul has developed this horrible disease, that they should be branded a werewolf. People were literally put to death in the 1600s as a result of ignorant thinking like that, so no thank you. However, in addition to suddenly becoming covered in hair, an individual could acquire a delusional disorder known as clinical lycanthropy, in which they truly believe they can change into a wild animal. They have vivid hallucinations or false memories of transforming, and they may engage in disturbing behaviours like growling, howling, walking on all fours, and changing their diet. So again, while I don't condone the idea of labelling someone a werewolf just because they're unfortunate enough to have a pair of very rare medical disorders, my point is, it's genuinely possible that you will wake up one day with hair growing all over your body and the unshakable compulsion to live out your life as a wolf. How perturbing. And number one, our knowledge of hypothermia is founded on Nazi human experimentation. I'm not entirely sure what to say about this one. During World War II, the Nazis carried out horrendous medical experiments on thousands upon thousands of captives, including Soviet prisoners of war, disabled Germans, Romani gypsies, and Jews from all across Europe. From chemical weapons tests to force-feeding seawater, from malaria experiments to burns research, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you the Nazis pulled no punches when it came to the welfare of their subjects. One of the more troubling realities of this, however, is their hyper 
hypothermia studies in particular, formed the basis of modern understanding, stripping subjects naked and casting them outdoors in temperatures as low as minus 6, that's 21 Fahrenheit, the researchers learned all too much about the effects of cold on the human body. Even more harrowing is the testimony of one lab assistant who claimed that a study into the rewarming process involved throwing subjects into boiling water. Since the end of the Holocaust, at least 45 modern medical journals have cited the data from these hypothermia studies, and though it's an absolute ethical nightmare to pay even a jot of credence to what happened, the Nazis' findings significantly accelerated our understanding of the condition. The world is horrible. And on that terrible end, that's our list. Did we miss out any other disturbing facts? Let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you're looking for more lists like this, why not head to whatculture.com for plenty of daily news, lists, and articles. And you can even follow WhatCulture on Twitter here. I'm Peter from whatculture.com, and I'm never getting a cat.